Harris and I'm from AlloyTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at chemical structure and uh, we're going to look at a summary of the um, structures that you would normally find in um, chemistry um, and uh, we're going to go through the properties of them as well um, and we're going to do a, an explanation of um, some of the properties too. So we've got um, different structures, we've got four different structures uh, and we're going to go through each one uh, and show you kind of um, what the properties are and explain some of them as well. So here's our first one. Now this is a, uh, an ionic compound as you can see um, because we have uh, ions in there, we have positive and negative ions. Um, the structure is giants uh, and the reason why we know it's giants is because all of the ions are arranged in, in one kind of lump which is on here. Uh, and they are, it's quite a large um, compound, so that's where the word giant ionic compound comes from. Melting points of these things are quite high, um, and if they ask in the exam why, then you need to say that you have um, lots of um, strong electrostatic attractions between oppositely charged ions, um, and you need a lot of energy to overcome these um, strong electrostatic attractions. So, um, and the reason why um, they are strong is because each positive ion, as you can see here, uh, is surrounded by six negative ions. So that's a lot of electrostatic attraction to break. So you've got one, two, three, you'll have one below, which is four, one in front, which is five, and then one behind, which is six. Very, very strong, very difficult to break down. Electrical conductivity, these things are not very good at conducting electricity when they're solid. Um, the ions are fixed in position, um, and for something to conduct electricity, you need to have um, positive, you need to have um, free ions, or you need to have free electrons, um, neither of which exist in solid ionic compounds. But when you dissolve them, um, sorry, when you uh, melt them or dissolve them in solution, um, they will actually conduct. Um, and the reason why is because the ions will actually are actually free to move around, um, and that means that they will conduct electricity when molten or in solution. Um, the next one is covalence. Uh, now covalence. Uh, molecules come in different forms and this one's a giant covalence um, also known as macromolecular as well you might see it written as that um, and these come in different forms I've drawn one form on there but you can get things like diamond and graphite um, buckman sulfurine um, silicon dioxide etc there's loads of them and they all arrange themselves in different ways but the general properties um, of them is actually they have high melting points um, and the reason why is because we have uh, many strong covalent bonds, um, which you can see on there, um, and they require a lot of energy to overcome these bonds. Um, so um, if they ask you in the exam why they have a high melting point, that's what you would need to say. And that's the only, that's the only uh, time when you should talk about melting points and bonds, because uh, most of the time you should actually be talking about intermolecular forces, which I'll come on to in a minute. But when you've got giant structures like this and you're trying to break them, you are actually trying to break bonds, and that's why these things have such a high melting point. So if you're not sure about intermolecular forces, then if you just click on the link below, um, and that will show you, um, there's a video that will show you what an intermolecular force is. Um, now, in terms of electrical conductivity, these things um, don't conduct electricity when they are um, solid, and they don't conduct when liquid, or in solution, um, and the reason why is because even when we do melt them, and um, we don't have any free electrons, uh, and we don't actually have any free ions in this as well, with it being covalent, um, it is important to know actually that there is um, some compounds like buckman sulfurine and um, graphite that actually can conduct electricity. They're one of the few exceptions. Um, so, but the vast, the vast majority of giant covalent structures don't conduct electricity at all. Um, the next one, which is this one here, now this is covalent as well, because you can see the um, you can see the actual uh, covalent bonds between these, except these are classed as simple covalents. Um, now these are simple covalents because they don't actually form giant structures like this. They just exist as like a pair. So this could be something like iodine or chlorine or oxygen. So these are just very, very simple molecules. And as you know, um, most things like chlorine, nitrogen, oxygen, um, generally um, they are they have very low melting points um, and that's because um, all you have here are is just weak intermolecular forces um, between um, the actual molecules 
And um, because you've got weak intermolecular forces between these molecules here, um, that means they're very easy to actually um, to melt. Um, even things like um, uh, iodine, iodine doesn't actually melt at room pressure, uh, it sublimes, but you don't need a lot of heat um, for it to do that. So um, these are all examples of simple molecular or simple covalent molecules, or you could just call them molecular. So that's what these are here. Um, in terms of uh, electrical conductivity, um, again, they don't conduct electricity uh, when they're solid, they don't do it when they're liquid or a solution. Um, it is very difficult to, um, these things may react when you dissolve them in solution, but they won't actually conduct electricity. Again, for the same reasons as above, um, they don't have any free electrons uh, and they don't have any free ions because they're covalently bonded. So um, these things don't conduct electricity. Now the last one, which is down here, this one's metallic. So I'll put that on there. Um, now this is metallic because we have positive metal ions in the middle and we've got a sea of delocalized electrons, as you can see in red there. Um, so this structure is giant as well. Um, and we know it's giant, again, for the same reasons as above, because we have a lot of positive ions in one area. So it forms a big, big structure. And so we call that giant metallic structure. Um, the melting points of these are generally high. Um, most metals have high melting points. Uh, and the reason, um, if they ask in the exam, the reason is because you have uh, a strong attraction between the delocalized electrons, which are these ones here, and the positive uh, metal ion, which is, um, which is down there. And that attraction, um, and you have a lot of them, uh, that attraction means that they generally have high melting points. Um, in terms of electrical conductivity, obviously solids do, uh, in a solid metal, they do conduct electricity with copper wires. Um, they will conduct when we melt them as well. So if we melt, um, um, if we melt um, the metal, then it will conduct electricity as well when it's liquid. Um, the solution one's a bit difficult. Um, metals don't generally, um, they don't really dissolve in solution anyway. So. Um, that's the main reason why we say that they don't conduct electricity when in solution. Um, you do need to know um, all of these and you do need to be able to explain um, the properties, not just know them, but also explain them like what I've just done there. Um, but um, it shouldn't be too bad and make sure that you know the difference between um, structure uh, and bonding, which is um, slightly different. So this is how the atoms are arranged, which is structure and bonding is purely just looking at the bond between the atoms. But um, I hope that helps. Bye.